Minnesota Vikings have been around since 1961. And I just want them to win a damn Super Bowl before I die. Welcome to Before I Die with Jesse and Miles on Purple Daily and Score North. That's right. Just one, just one Lombardi before we die. This year, still looking primed. Minnesota Vikings suffering their first loss of the season at the hands of the Detroit Lions, which doesn't make many of us very happy. Uh, I'm Jesse Pierce. He's Miles Gorm. He's Ross Brundle. We're back, boys. Vikings are now 5-1. and one. They are no longer atop the NFC North. They have faced adversity for probably the first time this season, given the fact that since week one, it's the first time they trailed in a game. They trailed for 33 minutes against the Detroit Lions. Kind of a very roller coaster of a game, which I think we all expected, right? We knew it was going to be close. You had some good things on both sides of the ball, but also some really bad things, especially from the Minnesota Vikings. Miles, first take, what was your first impression of yesterday's 31-29 loss at U.S. Bank Stadium? Sloppy. And the biggest issue I had is that it was coming out of a bye and you're at home. Like the the pre the, the pre snap penalties and and those things that just shouldn't happen coming out of a bye week and you're at home you control the crowd you know you you had a week, two weeks to like prepare for this guys shouldn't just be this mentally like like lost <laughs> going yeah. into this this is supposed to be like okay we're rejuvenated we just had a really really tough first five games of the season we traveled to London we got we got a break my issue is like that that that's my issue is they came out and they just looked sloppy. And like that just can't happen. And I think that's it's got to be obviously a combination of coaching and and just the players just not feeling ready and mentally. And that's just a problem coming out of the bye at home. So that was my biggest my biggest take coming out of it. We can get into the rest of it, but that was that was my biggest issue just to, to start. Well, and KOC said just that post game, right? That they were self inflicted. They were shooting themselves yep. in the foot pretty consistently. So it is something at least that the whole staff acknowledged and took accountability for because you're right. It shouldn't have happened, especially after that week off. Plus you get Aaron Jones back, which was huge, right? right? And you're playing against the Detroit Lions who no longer have Aiden Hutchinson. So there were certain holes and gaps that you could have taken advantage of. And I think Minnesota started to exploit those. Another great first quarter, another fast start, Uh, a fake Hunt? Like, what are we doing, Detroit? There, Dan Campbell shot himself in the foot a few times. I mean, they too. still won the game. <laughs> they did, but that was right? ridiculous. That was so. Oh, yeah. it was that was that was ridiculous. Ross, what were your thoughts on the first L in the column? You know, overall, if you're going off of just entertainment value for a game, I thought the game was incredibly entertaining, very fun. Plenty of good takeaways, too. I I liked seeing the team bounce back from adversity. We all knew that they would lose games at some point. Still think this has the potential to be a really fun season. But I think we're starting to see some things with... I still think Sam Darnold can be just fine. But I think we've seen that he's probably already hit his peak this year. It will be interesting to see if Kevin O'Connell and that coaching staff can come up with other ways just to keep him comfortable. Overall, I think when you look at the numbers yesterday, I think he was 22 of 27, 259. Pretty good when you look at the numbers, but in crunch time, I think he just left a lot to be desired. But, you know, overall, I think both teams would say that they were sloppy. I thought that first half, even though I said the entertainment value was really good, ugly, ugly, ugly. Did we go more than... 30 seconds of real time without a penalty flag being thrown on that one third down just kept going over and over it's the longest third down i've ever witnessed in my entire life so bad yeah but overall i'm not too disappointed and i know we'll get into it later in the show i think what the vikings need to guard against is letting one loss turn into two because i i think having to go on the road to take on the rams three and a half days after a loss to the detroit lions at home i think that's a tough ask so I think we'll know a lot more about this team and have a really good indication of this team on Friday morning. I'm not too down about this one. Yes, yes. Miles, you have your hand up. I believe you have something to say. (laughs) I do this at work too, by the way. Um, (laughs) uh, But like, uh, yes, uh, I actually think it's a good thing that they play on Thursday. It's one of those like, it's a tough pill to swallow. One of those like, you're just like really frustrated and rather than sitting and stewing on it all week for a Sunday game, you get to come out right away and just hit the ground running. Um, So there's no like, there's, there's not a lot of like, I gotta sit and just like like dwell in this. I think they get to turn around and try to like go jumpstart themselves in L.A., which is like another home game because fans don't seem to really, really uh, do well. The home teams in in L.A. don't really do that great, so the Vikings aren't at like a huge disadvantage there either. 
So I think the Vikings can kind of get out there right away and just kind of jumpstart and go um, rather than like sitting and stewing, like I said. How are we feeling that TJ Hawkinson might make his mighty return? Are we feeling pretty optimistic? Again, this is a Monday morning. It's so one of my big takeaways for this week. Oh, oh do you, would you care to indulge us? <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think the biggest issue you saw yesterday is when the offense got stale, which they did. There was times, especially in the middle of the game, where the offense just kind of went flat. Mm-hmm. Um, they trying to force it to Jefferson too much, which creates a lot of like miss opportunities and not enough guys getting open. Addison and Naylor, like they both had pretty good games, but they weren't they weren't like fixing problems when those guys, like with those guys. And I think they're really missing a guy to fix problems, especially across the middle of the field insert tj hawkinson right i don't buy and i think it's not just about tj hawkinson like um how it's it's how good tj hawkinson is it's not just a position like they they need an upgrade at the tight end position and they have one internally in hawkinson now obviously it's going to probably take a while for him to like fully get back up to speed and and kind of be that guy but i think as the season goes you're going to see that that his value is just going to increase as, as the season goes on because he's a guy across the middle who can win downfield and who can get open across the middle that they're just kind of missing. And I think that Sam Darnold's missing that because you can tell the when he's thrown to the, the outside the numbers, yeah, he's hitting some of those, especially to guys like Jefferson, but he's also missing some of those um, those easy throws and some of those, those throws across the middle where that guy kind of gets open or is a bigger body. And Munt had a good game yet. Oh, no, no, let me let me slow down. Munt had an okay game, could have had a really good game, and if that was Hawkinson, it probably would have been a bigger game, right? right. And I think those are some of the like, those are some of the small in- intricacies that like are they're missing from Hawkinson that could really help elevate the rest of the offense. I want to talk a little bit more about Sam Darnold, but first I do want to acknowledge you talked about forcing it to JJ. There were times when Addison was open, and it's like Sam Darnold yeah. didn't even look in his direction, and I was just like. Why? What are what are we doing? We need to get the ball down there and go to Addison. And it did it. That was kind of the first time I've really noticed that all yeah. season where it was they were so force feeding it to Jefferson. And and I get it. I mean, JJ is who he is, but you had Addison looks and a couple nailer as well. And it was just kind of frustrating to see that where it yes. wasn't even any attention paid to those guys sometimes. Well, and then the interception. You know, he's yeah. not open. Addison's not open, so forcing that. And then you go to the other side of the field. Jones is wide open in the flat for a check down. What, this is what we talked about a couple weeks ago when he, he tried to force it to Jefferson rather than hitting a wide open guy for, you know, 10, 15-yard gain. Right. Like, take sometimes it's okay to take the easy. Just take the easy and, and live to play another down. And, and sometimes I think Darnold has this mindset where he's like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to give it a rip, let it rip. And like, those are things that we talked about with our previous quarterback. You're like, Oh, we'd like to see him do that a little bit more. Right. But also you want to see some of that, like, like, like bring it back a little bit. It's okay to bring it back a little bit and not always force feed it. And you try can to play take those, safe. A it's bit. okay to play safe sometimes, especially okay. in certain, certain times. I think that was what first or second down too. Like you don't always need to like make the big play um, in, on every single down. It's always going to be a fine line, right? You make those plays, you make the big plays by maybe forcing it in there. People don't pay as much attention to it when you win the game. It's when you lose the game that people pay more attention to it. And I don't know when you make that. I know people are going to cringe when we say this, but when you great comparison, I think with Kirk Cousins and Sam Darnold there, but I think for both of them, I think it just comes down to when you win, nobody, nobody cares. Everything is more microscopic in a loss. And again, for the Vikings, I will echo what Miles said. I do think there is something to be said for being able to play right away. And again, you lost 29 to 28 in a game that was dead. Even when you go look at the stats, mm-hmm. I, the the result could have been far worse. You always want to win. It would have been great to win because suddenly then you see a path to this rock star year where you're not losing a ton of games. But at the end of the day, you know, to Miles' point, maybe this maybe this can be good, but it's only good if you can survive the uh, Rams on Thursday night. Yeah, well, and let me real real quick. My last thing here is it's not all bad, like you said, Ross. I, I think I don't want to come across as like the the negative Nancy, the, the person that's only viewing this as a negative. It's not. They played. There was a lot of really good that happened yesterday too. The run game against a good defense, a good defense in Detroit. Aaron Jones. I, talk about fantasy. I didn't start Jones this week because I didn't know. Did how you healthy start he Amon Ross St. Brown though? I did. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how healthy I just didn't know how healthy Jones was gonna be going into the game. So I was like, oh they brought in Cam Akers, like maybe it's just gonna be more of a true mix where like Jones plays like half the downs or like, you know, third, rather than like his usual like eighty percent of the of the snaps. That was the complete 
wrong assumption there. He played almost every snap and obviously looked good. Have we seen enough with Cam Akers returning kicks? <laughs> <laughs> I think the yeah. Viking staff has. They ganked him as the game went on. <laughs> oh, oh, they boy. did. I missed that. I yeah. missed that. I, I, was su- I was surprised to see him in that role. I mean, which then leads me to believe was acquiring him more as a special teams asset than anything. Cause initially I thought cam Akers was brought in as insurance for Aaron Jones, but then Aaron Jones played yesterday and he played well. So who knows? Just interesting. interesting. I think at least was, was Gaskin uh, at all on the field like, or is he dressed? I don't even know if I remember. I didn't look at the inactives yesterday. I missed that. I thought um, you paid attention to everybody named Miles, at least. I, don't know. I know, I, I usually know. do. I usually do. But if he wasn't, I could see why they put Akers back there. That's that was more of what I was going to say. That's how far off the radar, radar, the radar Miles Gaskin is to Miles Gore. He didn't yes. even look look him up. Jeez, hurtful. Hurtful. You're killing him. It's sad. Almost as sad as, did you guys see a side note? Because I have to bring it up because it's so unhinged. The Arizona State. Coach calling out their kicker and saying they're holding open tryouts. Love it. Love for kicking. it. Just poor college kid. Didn't perform well. Just brutal. Brutal. Absolutely I did brutal. see I did see a tweet that looked verified from a ASU student who sent him a tweet showing him kicking and the kicks were pretty good. So maybe that kid's go. got a chance to make to make hey. the team. Hey, here's a segue. The one one issue Vikings don't have is kicking, right? There we go. Oh, Look oh, at oh, Miles. God, I love it. Yes. He's, be still my beating heart for now. I'm always afraid of what's going to happen. Okay, so oh, KOC KOC hinted, had they not had that penalty, he might have sent uh, Big Leg Bill out there or for a 70-yarder. 70 70 no, it would have been a 68 67, 67. 68. Yeah. Still I, in- <laughs> I think it would have had a chance. Far. I think it yeah. would have had a chance. Mm-hmm. I think he was ready. I think he felt confident. I know, Ross, kicking is your kind of bread and butter. I know you love it. I know you love Big Leg Bill. How good did that feel for him to kick? What was that? 50, 57. 57. Yeah. I, I say this because I so don't, good. I don't ever want him to miss a kick, but I say this with all kickers and especially him because he's younger. I don't really care when he misses a kick unless it costs them a game. If it's at the end, I care about how does the next kick go? Cause that's what I worry about. He's, he's going to miss a kick when he does. Does he get back on the bike? That's probably far too much special teams talk for the day, but I do love some big leg bill. I was a fan of the draft pick and hope it continues to work out well, but <laughs> cause I just don't believe him in, in drafting specialists, but mm. he's done really well and been arguably the best kicker in football. If not one of the best. Yeah. I love it. Love, I just, love what I just love how awkward kickers are. Sorry. I I, I, I just can't oh, talk enough. And he about just kickers. Like, looks like, and he looks like a specialist, right? Like, when you look at the entire group of NFL players, when Will walks in, that dude looks, you're like, oh, that dude's a kicker. He <laughs> looks he looks like he would be a foreman at a construction site. Like, put the vest on him walking around with a hard hat, and he would just be bossing people around. Like you know, finance not, guy to me. You know, yeah. like one of those, like, oh, that dude's like r- rocking finance. You know, go to, go to him for the numbers. This is for my love is blind guilty pleasure watchers out there. This recent episode or this recent season has a guy who I can't remember if he's a kicker or a punter, but he's in the pod. But all he says is he's a football player. And so when they when she sees him, she was like, oh, I expected like somebody bigger and taller. And he's just like this scrawny little guy. Was he a kicker definitely or looks like a kicker. Yeah, he was a kicker or a punter. He's one of the two. I can't remember which one. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he loved to lean on that football player thing. And it was because she's like, oh, and I was a cheerleader. I'm like, he's a kicker. He's not. He's not like the quarterback classic apparently you guys are love is blind people i, I have only here, seen the previews i was trying to come up with something witty and i had nothing so i thought it was best just to say nothing at all i watched the what season is it now just just like seven i think i watched six was that the okay. one with the like uh you think some narcissistic yeah people? there's some like, crazy people i watched i watched that one where like the the lady was like going crazy on him for just yeah. like Literally going to get a drink. Oh, for like a and he was eating an orange and or something yeah. like that. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, I yeah. watched that season, um, so but good. I haven't seen the newest season. There's some, there's some, there's some interesting characters out there. Uh, speaking of interesting characters, kind of again, we're not turning on Sam Darnold. I don't want us to be turning on mm. Sam Darnold. We're all still very on the Sam Darnold train. You can't love the guy and then hate him for a tough game. But as our fearless leader Phil Mackey pointed out, it was a tough 
final six minutes for Sam Darnold. Failed to convert key two-point conversion after defensive touchdown. Sailed third and down to Justin Jefferson. That could have sealed the game and took too long to throw on second-to-last play, resulting in a rushed five-yard penalty, which pushed the Vikings out of field goal range. Similar to what we've already talked about, so I don't need to stress it too much. I think the adversity is good. I think the loss is good. So you can identify the areas that you need to improve on in the game. And as you've said, Miles and Ross, you've agreed with turning around and having to go play Thursday is good. Like I'm glad that the Vikings are facing those hurdles and challenges now at this point in the season too. I mean, it's just, it's nice to know that they can kind of figure it out and see what it is. Cause I did, I hate that se- technically the second to last uh, possession the Vikings had. I hated it. I hated everything about it. They did not, Rough. move the sticks like they needed to it was just it was bad I did not like it but you learn from it you figure it out and do better next time I have a random lion's take I want to throw at you guys is that permitted Jesse I love that you're sure. both just staring blankly at me you know I mean I got in trouble in the comments for being okay with the Detroit Lions oh I know so, right and the, you know, the, the, was it the, bear, I don't know. the bears and lions like yeah. Sorry, we like football. Um, I just like good. I like sports, man. Just give me a good sports game. Okay, so first off, on that on that last possession, I think that says more about the Vikings or second to last possession. That says more about the Vikings than it does the Lions. And I trust the coaching staff enough that they will figure that out and, and fix it. Again, I'm not going to be too down about one loss, even though there's things I think we would all love to change. On the Lions, and I know this is not. Um, scarlet and gray or whatever colors they are daily. I have a thought on the lions. I'm going to steal this from one of my buddies who pointed this out or said this to me via text message. And I said, I think that this is spot on. Is it possible we overrate Dan Campbell and that Ben Johnson should be getting all the credit. And I think Ben Johnson does get a lot of credit, but I just don't think that Dan Campbell's a, a, this sounds bad, but I just, he's not who I would hire to lead my football team. But I think Ben Johnson and that offense are just so ridiculous and their wizardry is they're the funnest offense for me to watch when they're cooking since the greatest show on turf. And I think that that has more to do with Ben Johnson than it does Dan Campbell. I think they both work well together because you have Ben Johnson, who's kind of I don't want to the intelligence behind it. Right. And Dan Campbell's kind of the the face, the brute force, the macho kind of outspoken outlandish type of guy. I mean, I think I'm not trying to say he's unintelligent, but I think Ben Johnson has that step up on him. So he's a little bit quieter, makes his schemes, gets his offense rolling. Cause I, it is like Detroit's success this season is largely hinged on a very strong offensive output. I mean, Jared Goff is just playing very well as, as well. Miles disagrees with us though. So I, I need to hear no, what he's saying. I also with. appreciate you saying that Jesse, because I was trying to tap. Dan. I could tell I, you were I, trying to say that. Like you didn't want to say dumb, but that's exactly you, what I was trying yeah. to avoid saying. Or Cause like, I don't believe meat, that he's I was waiting for dumb. You to say meathead. I didn't you know, want to say meathead, but it's a little meatheady. Yeah. Macho. That's actually, I, and I'm, again, I'm not anti him. I just think that people love to just laud Dan Campbell and we just act like Ben Johnson doesn't exist for the most part. Well, I'd like to his... bite kneecaps too once in a while. I don't know. It's just a thing. <laughs> Here, Here's where I disagree to a, to a degree. I'm not like obviously a, a huge Lions fan, so I don't follow them enough. But I think the part we we miss is we always give or take, we always give credit to the coordinators when they're doing well. And then we, um, we, we like, um, we did. We like take. We we like put all the blame on the head coaches when it's going poorly. So it's going well. And Dan, I think Dan Campbell, like what a head coach is supposed to be, is a leader of the entire franchise, the entire team. Yep. And I think what you see from him is that. And Ben Johnson is great at his current job as an OC. I don't think that means he'd be a great head coach. And maybe that's why he's not a current head coach, right? Like we don't know that. But I think the one thing I I do applaud like Dan Campbell is I think it's clear. That the fans, the, the the well, the fans, yes, but like the players love him, and I think he's just done a really good job of being the leader and that like the face of that franchise um, as what a head coach is supposed to be. And the same way I view that in Kevin O'Connell. Obviously, O'Connell calls plays, but I also just believe Kevin O'Connell's a, O'Connell's a really good head coach. People go to him; they like look to him as that leader. And I think Dan Campbell does that same thing, where it's like it's not just about you know play calling and all those things. I think he's a good CEO of what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I'll say this, Ben Johnson's name, not nearly as good as their former OC, Jim Bob Cooter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that guy. Oh. Greatest name, one of the greatest and, names of all time. Uh, when you said the, the, uh, um, this offense is as good as like the greatest show on turf or the most fun, I think the, 
I would say the Rams back in uh, Goff days when they went to the Super Bowl, the, those those offenses too. Goff's Goff's just a part of Goff some great part of it. offenses like that. Like say what you want about the dude, that dude should be in the MVP conversation at this stage of the of the season. And like he's an underrated quarterback, and that that dude just puts up really good numbers. And his offenses have always been really good. And we yeah, always Miles take away the credit for supporting him. the Detroit Lions. Yeah. You can follow yeah, him, go. tweet him at at Miles. <laughs> yeah, all the hate comments below <laughs> should yeah, go bring to it, bring it. should go to Miles. <laughs> uh, again, though, I think this is all good. I think it's setting up uh, final week of the season could be a really fun and really meaningful game again between the Vikings and Lions. So let's let's hope that that game means something. Well, I guess if you're really trying to be positive, the game will mean nothing to the Vikings. They'll be resting people, preparing for their one seed. But if you want to look at it another way, it could just be a very impactful game for both games or both teams later on. Speaking of impact, you know who makes an impact on me? Nicolay Law. I saw them on the billboards constantly. I went up to International Falls with my parent to see my mom this weekend. And there were a ton of Nicolay Law billboards. What an impact he's making out there. That is your number one segue of the year. I'm going to nominate that so far for best segue of the year. Yes, a quick shout out to Nicolay Law. They are the exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily. They know that when you or a loved one gets injured, ordinary life, it can come to a stop. Things get complicated. Nobody wants that. That's where the folks at Nicolay Law come in. They're just your normal, everyday folks. You'll see them when you're out and about, maybe getting groceries, walking the dog at the local park or even your favorite bar and grill. Normal, everyday folks. They're here to make sure you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. If you've been injured, get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. Get Nicolay. You can start your path to winning by giving them a call at 855-NICOLET. That's N-I-C-O-L-E-T, 855-NICOLET, or NicolayLaw.com. Bravo. Good work. Um, seriously, ton of billboards. It was very impressive. I was like, man, that is a lot of billboards. I, I do love the flannel look. They've embraced the Minnesota part there. Yeah, you need to do that once in a while. Uh, Let's gear up some comments from YouTube, or in this week's case, comments from Ventline. Comments from YouTube. Comments from Ventline. I I hate to say this. You never want the team to lose, but they're just more juicy when the team loses, right? There's there's more more fun to them. Okay, so here we go from Tenton is number one. I really hope that doesn't mean anything bad. I Googled it. I don't think it does. KOC is too scared late in the game and nurses leads versus putting teams away. Shake my head. Question number one, and we'll start with Miles. Fair assessment or not, Miles? Uh, uh, SMH means shaking my head. Shake my head. This way, yeah. an- <laughs> I can't just. Oh. <laughs> Shake my old head. man. What an <laughs> old man. Okay. Well, okay. Okay. There's so much emphasis want... on each individual word. Yes, you do. If you want to get after Shake, me. period. My period. Head. Period. You know what, Alex? Yeah, I said it. Alex, why don't you answer this question and leave me alone? I go to bed at 930 on Friday nights and fall asleep to Dateline. Okay. This should be the least surprising thing to you. This That's is so fair. true. Yeah, That's fair. fair. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> to answer that, I actually don't agree with that. I don't think KOC gets conservative in those situations. I actually think he gets sometimes too aggressive. Like, there's areas where you're like, hey, man, we need to get a first down, and you're trying to get a 25-yard chunk play. And not that, that you don't want that, but sometimes those are hard to come by. And when your quarterback's not playing as well as you'd like him to be, sometimes it's tough to put him in those situations. I think that's why you saw, like, Darnold miss that that throw to Jefferson where he oversales because I just think he was a little bit off in certain areas yesterday and um, because O'Connell is trying to be aggressive and win the football game. Mm-hmm. And so I don't I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing. I think that's where the Lions and Vikings, like, philosophies are very similar. They like to be aggressive. They're not the types to just, like, sit back and, like, hope they win the game. They're like, no, 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 we're just going to go put the game in our own hands. And I think if, like, obviously Darnold makes that throw, I don't think we're having this conversation where O'Connell is, like, being, you know, told that he's being too conservative. I think we're like, oh, man, that was a really aggressive play call to win a football game. Yeah, I, I'm i on the same page as you, Miles. I don't think that I've ever looked at KOC and been like, oh, he's too scared to do this or that. I mean, we've talked yeah. about that in other games, his aggressiveness, how they're running up the score compared to past years <laughs> right? where they're not. You know, so I think it's complete 
opposite. I don't think he plays care. I think he was just a little out coached toward the end of that. His yeah, teams weren't working. That. That's all. That's all that was. So I think that one instance, that one sample size, it looked like that maybe, but. I would not say that as a whole about KOC at all. Right. And we didn't even talk about the defense giving up four straight possessions of touchdowns like that. Yeah. Like I, I don't like to go overboard. Like as one bad game for the defense, like overall though, the defense has been really good this season and Flores <laughs> has been really good. And like, you're you without Blake Cashman too. This, and, this and, and yeah, no well. Blake Cashman. And like, you could just tell that, uh, Ben John- I almost called him Jim Bob Cooter because of you. Uh, <laughs> Ross. Um, ben Johnson was just in his bag yesterday, right? Like he just had, he had answers for Flores is like dis- disguises and we haven't seen that from other offenses this season. So yeah, they just like, you know, kudos to them. Comment number two comes from gopher for life. Number one, happy Maryland championship season to those who celebrate <laughs> first defense missed having Cashman on all those long runs. I agree with that. Secondly, Sam ceiling was the first three games. We talked about this early on, but again, are we being too hard on Sam Darnold? Jesse, I'll start with you. I mean, I think criticism comes from high expectations, right? Sam Darnold has given us the opportunity to have very high expectations for this team and for himself. So I think that's where that criticism, because he's looked human. There was cracks in the armor for the first time in this game. Not just for Sam Darnold, though, for everybody in purple that were they wearing purple. I didn't even remember if they were wearing purple. Were they wearing <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just had to make sure. Um, <laughs> Iowa State wore all black this weekend in case you missed it, Ross. So that was nice. Yeah, but, it could come um, from behind victory for Iowa State. <laughs> but I got robbed. Who did? Iowa State? No. no. Who did they play? Central UCF. Florida. Yeah. yeah. They got robbed. UCF yeah, got it was robbed. great. God, I loved it. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I was like, this is sad that it's coming down to the wire for the Cyclones. They even dropped a spot in the AP because it was not a great win. But they won. Anyway, um, I think there's a good level of being tough, right? Because you do. You want to push him. But I don't, I'm not, again, I'm not against Sam Darnold now. We can't love the guy and then just hate him after one not great game. Because it wasn't even terrible. It just wasn't great. That's all. So maybe a little too harsh. But also, I don't think I mind the toughness. He can deal with it. He can handle it. We're not being too egregiously bad yet. I think if this continues, then, you know, he might see some hate fly. Yeah, I, I view I view Sam Darnold as like how I viewed 2017 Case Keenum. It's like you take the good with the bad, and there's going to be a roller coaster. That's just going to happen with these guys because that's the style of quarterbacks they are. They're not consistently really good all the time. But when you get the high level of play, you get really high level. But when you when it's bad, it's pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Like that that seal that, that floor is really low. it's pretty low. It's not that high like what you get from like a Kirk Cousins and you know as an example. But like what we're used to we're used to just like stable quarterback play most of the time. And I know I know Kirk had his and has his roller coasters. But like for the most part, you saw a lot of like stability from Kirk. Whereas Sam Darnold is going to give you a little bit more of that variance. And I think that's the difference as a fan is like we got so used to early in the season how good he was playing and just have those expectations every week. But Darnold's just not that good of a quarterback. He's gonna gonna give you those roller coasters, and I think it's okay. Like because you do see the high high level and that throw to Addison yesterday, like that fl- like the flick of the wrist throwing that ball like 60, 50 yards. Like those are just things that like you get, but then you also get the the times where he sails the ball to Jefferson, like. That's just going to happen with with the Sam Darnold. So, I don't know. I just take the good with the bad. For the hate commenters, Miles uh, displayed his <laughs> adoration for the Detroit Lions. Also called Sam Darnold, quote, not a good quarterback, end quote. <laughs> no, no. I didn't mean to call him not a good. Uh, dang it. I plus did, that see, word. Plus see, that that's, word. Right? Yep. That's, yep. I don't mean he's not a good. He's not as good of a quarterback. Like He would rather have Jared Goff as a quarterback. He thinks he's better. He's I forward. would. Wouldn't you? <laughs> Go get him. Go get him, Vikings fans. I'm just, I'm just, all I'm saying is, though, is like Sam Darnold made, is making $10 million a year versus Jared Goff making 50 something a year for a reason. That's all I'm saying. I'm, That's all I'm saying. I'm also willing to admit I may have taken that quote incredibly out of context, but that does not matter. Oh, it's Comment- still funny. It doesn't matter. It's the internet. It doesn't matter. Comment number three from Supermax99. I'm here at the Rams Raiders game. We're going to punish the Rams on Thursday. They have no run game. We needed this loss to reset and come back down to earth. So here's the question. Very simple. Jesse, Miles, Miles, you can start. And Jesse, you can take us home on comments from YouTube. Who wins and why on Thursday night? Well, real quick, Jesse said earlier that it was a good thing that they lost. So she said it was a positive. And yeah. 
Well, I, look, so we just need to, Super we need to Max ninety nine agrees with me. You get need on to get her. Lost to reset get on her for that, her. folks. Get on her for that. <laughs> um, no, I actually do. I think the like, like we said earlier in the show. I think the the turnaround, the quick turnaround on Thursday, um, going to L A. Um, I I think it's a good thing, and I think they're gonna come out pretty decisively. I would agree. I I'm excited. I think they want to. I don't want to say avenge because I I think they're gonna just move forward, but. You're going to go and avenge the loss and take it out on the Rams. And KOC going against his old team, you know? Yeah, I love it. In my best Lee Corso, not so fast. Closer than the experts think on Thursday night. But the Vikings escape with a victory. One score or what? I'm thinking like a 23 to 20. I think the game's going to start off ugly for both teams. Those Thursday night games are never pretty on the ice. Thursday nights are kind of tough to watch. That's true. That's true. So I think it'll be close, but I'm just hopeful for a victory. Uh, speaking you know, of teams in purple, we got another team in purple that performed correct. Russ? That was uh, your other one went in the Segway Hall of Fame. That one was adequate at it best. Was bad. It was forced. <laughs> it was force feeding it. Yeah, uh, I'll still give you credit. Uh, a team that's better than adequate as of late is the St. Thomas Tommies. Now three and zero in Pioneer League play. They return home this Saturday on fifteen hundred ESPN and at fifteen hundred ESPN dot com. They get the University of San Diego, and I love this. Most Tommy's home games start at 1 o'clock. Since they know San Diego's coming from the West Coast, we're kicking off at noon on Saturday. I love that. Get those body clocks even more messed up for San Diego. Pre-game at 11.30 a.m. kickoff at noon on 1500 ESPN and 1500ESPN.com. It's time now for the Before I Die crew to give us their... <clears throat> Before I die. Miles, here you go. You're Damn, up. You're putting me on the spot Better. first. Yeah. Um, so this weekend, uh, did a couple things around the house, you know, mulch the, mulch the yard, uh, clean, cleaned the entire, like, uh, like basic level, uh, base level of our, our house. Um, I just, like, I, I, I like scrubbed. I did everything for the, like for this house. And just like within a couple of hours of my kids getting home, it was a wreck again. And I'm like, well, it feels like what's the point, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, I just, I don't know what to do. Like, I would just love one one day of my house to just be peaceful. And it's just never going to happen. I know that. That's a parent. That's young kids. That's, like, my, my kid's job isn't to keep the house clean. My kid's job is to have fun and, and play and do those things, Aww, right? Oh, that's so sweet. Because I, I don't feel just, the same way. I'm screaming at them to fail. <laughs> Oh, I want oh, to yeah. move in with Miles. I oh, I, no, you don't. I, I, unless I, you don't. Um, <laughs> I clean. Um, yeah, but do you watch kids? Uh, I try not to. Do well, you like watching you football? Because you don't get to watch a lot of that. That's like, no, yeah, that's, during, that's the the game, during the game, my kids are like, can we go outside? Can we go yeah. outside? This is boring. Yeah. Like, and I'm, you know, those things. But, like, I did all these things around the house this weekend. You know, it's a good, you know, like this is a good, a good partner, a good, you know, parent does. And it just all got wrecked again. The tree, I, I mulch my leaves, and of course the rest of the leaves fall the, the next day. You know, I clean my house, and within a couple hours it's just dirty again. And it's just like, what do I gotta do? So I don't know what my before I die is. Before I die, just like one day of peace. I just need one day of peace. Um, and I guess that's it. They'll go to college in like ten to twelve years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to think that far ahead. Come on, it's gonna be a They're long. Three time. and five, Ross. I, <laughs> yeah. They're babies. They're my babies. You know. I can't. Uh, and and what? Uh, you said three and five. It's yeah. only a matter of time before they start dating too. And then Miles don't. is really gonna have issues. Don't. Don't. No. 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 <laughs> no, no. We don't need to. We don't need to go there yet. They're... <sighs> Classic. But yeah, I love it. That's it. My husband did the leaves, and he was like, "Well, didn't you notice I did the leaves?" I'm like, "No, because it's all full again. Like yeah, it was a matter of an hour." He's like, "I tried." I'm like, "I know. That's." great for you it's like that's why i took a picture of avery helping rake i was like yeah i, figured. I didn't rake i mulch i don't okay. like raking yeah we have too many we got too much there's too many i know but... we probably do too but i just Sorry. power through it because i'd rather push them over than rake you. i don't well you got to run the gas out before winter time here too ah no you know? i have what? an electric because i care about the environment no, I don't. I'm gonna run that gas constantly. <laughs> Fuel with fumes. I just run. I just turn snow. my car on just for the just for the sake just of it. You know, just to run the it. gas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Ross, before you I, die. I've said forms of this before, and I am sorry. I know I will get old. I already, in many aspects of my life, as we have discovered and talked about on this show, I already am old. 
I am a firm believer, and I will pay extra for this per month, maybe $5 per month, $10 per month, whatever Mr. Costco decides. There should be a day or a couple periods of week that are, that are allotted for only certain types of people. You, I can't <laughs> stand, I can't stand, and sorry, Miles and Jesse, when I'm at Costco and somebody has their gaggle of kids and they're taking up all the aisle space and you can't get oh, by them, yes. or even worse, I'm sorry to say this, all the old people who walk like one mile per hour in the middle of the GD aisle and I'm just trying to get in and out of Costco. Yes. So I want everybody to be able to experience Costco. I don't want to take that joy away from anybody. It's one of joy. God's greatest gifts to his people. Like shopping. But we need to start segmenting who can go at what time. It'll make all of our lives. If you're like me and you walk a thousand miles per hour and you want to spend two hundred dollars at Costco in fifteen minutes, I want my time to get in and out without everybody getting in my way. That that's it. That sounded really mean and angry. I'm sorry, but that's how I'm feeling right now. You're right. I think people are just there's no self awareness from people, and I can't stand it. They act like there's no one else around them on this earth. It's just them. <laughs> So, like, how they move, it's just, like, like kids, I understand. Kids don't know better. But yeah, like, and I'll give the kids a pass because I love parents, kids. I, I honestly parents and old Parents and old people and regular people, they, like, they just, like, walk around and, and like, just, like, veer and, and do all this. Like, other people aren't around them. There's no, like, looking. There's none of that. They just, like, go. And you're, like, I – yes, I'm with you. I'm, this this I have a heart, like – I'm with you on this. I can't stand it because people just walk around this earth as if other people don't exist. I'm, I'm with you. I am. It. What about aisles and interchanges? I've also thought, or not aisles, uh, lanes and interchanges. What if when you're going through Costco, Ross if you're wants going... lanes everywhere. He wants them at the fair. Yeah. He wants and, them at Costco. Oh, he wants blinkers on. Wants blinkers <laughs> on. Uh, yeah. on, the, on the carts. Yeah. <laughs> I just, oh. I just want to be able to get in and out, and and I don't want to call out just Costco. I, I think. Target is like this too. I mean, people shop at Target like they live there. Because like just you don't... don't go to Target with a list. That's how you get in trouble. You never leave with the things that you need because you never go in prepared. That's why and I do drive up. Starbucks. So huh? people yeah. always stop there too. Yeah. You're just, you're Target. You don't go to Target getting what you want. Target tells you what you want. Ta we've Target also, tells you what you need. We've talked about this before, but nobody perfected the human psyche and how to make extra money like high V. Yeah, let's go to Hy-Vee. Let's spend $150 on groceries. And before we leave, let's spend $30 on takeout Chinese food. True. Like, it's brilliant. Brilliant by them. Okay, I'm done. I yield my time to the right, to the great show men. host from just, the North Metro. Just angry men. Um, before I die, I'm going to see the Northern Lights with my eyes and in person. So this summer has been like, <laughs> see, I'm so happy and crazy. Um I, my my mom lives in International Falls where I love it's this one so beautiful, much. right? Like I need to see the northern lights over the lake and the green. I saw them a couple weeks ago. It was after the wild played, and it was just late enough. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go out a little past White Bear, out to the pine tree apple orchard area where it's open. And you can see it with your phone, which is all fine and well, but I want to see it with the peepers. I need to see it northern lights one day before I die. That's a true one. I think, too, um, any type of lighting in the sky when people talk about Oh, well, if you can't see it, if you take a picture with your phone, then you can really, that doesn't count. No, it you actually, count. you actually need to see. I yeah. don't care how beautiful your pictures are. If the camera is picking up things, your eyes can't. I, know. I need like, to be able to see you it. You should have seen how ridiculous. I'm just sitting in this like field and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be seeing. And then I like take a picture. I'm like, how is this a thing? Like it was just, it was very bizarre. Like I sat out there for a good half hour eating Taco Bell and just being like, I don't know what I'm doing out here. Like I have no idea. How to find this, but there you have it. That's so, it. yeah, I think I, I think we all struck a chord today on these before I die. <laughs> and that's exactly what these are for. They're supposed to be therapies. I actually want to start seeing more people put theirs in so I can start talking about them on this pod. Agreed. Please drop your before I dies in the comments below, as well as any other thoughts you have about the Minnesota Vikings game this past Sunday or looking ahead to Thursday. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Before I Die on Purple Daily and Score North. Don't forget to check out all the other great Purple Daily content, as well as Score North content, including Timberwolves, um, uh, hockey, wow. hockey. How did I forget hockey? I Timberwolves um, hockey. I, it's a basketball state, guys. It's a basketball yeah, state. It's true. For the most part. I kind of like it. Um, and yeah, there we go. Poor links. Links were robbed. Links were robbed. Uh, links, links were robbed. Uh, thank goodness it wasn't in Hennepin County or there would be a lot of rioting.
<laughs> we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>